Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP gaming laptop. This is an HP Omen 17-AN101 model. And in this video, I'm going to take you on a step by step how you can open it up and how you can service, clean the fan system, the heat sink, and make it run a little cooler and on you know, better performance you can get out of it. People always ask me how often I should do my repays. I always say the same thing. There is no exact date to when you should do because there's a few factors. How dirty is the environment that you use? How much dust is can get plugged inside the fans? that can provoke the air going out and that can end up for heating up. It's not because of the thermal paste quality or how long it can last. The, a thermal paste normally can last up to three to four years before expiring. But after one year, year and a half, the normal use, you're going to have enough dust build up in there. And even the thermal paste, if you reach the high temperature on it, it will dry up and it will not conduct uh, nicely the heat from the GPU or CPU to the heat sink. So after doing the first repaste, take a picture, write down the date, and after one year, 12 months, open it up and check the constant, check how good is the thermal paste, if it's pasty and if it's not runny and if it's not dried out, and see if it's clean, the fan system is clean, then you wanna postpone the servicing for the next one year and a half or two years. But if you see it's really dirty, the fans are clogged up and the thermal paste it's dried up, you won't want to do it every eight months or five months, depending your situation. All right, with all that said, you're going to get it started. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop. You want to flip it upside down. I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using. Tool number one is an iFixit screwdriver set. I like this tool set. It's one of the best ones out there. They're made out of S2 class steel. We are going to be using a Phillips number zero from this tool set. If you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tools and tweezers. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. Get one of that. A uh, plastic spatula or wood spatula, that will be fine. A curved straight tweezers, it's a handy to have. And one of the main important ones would be the one sheet or two sheet of the workshop towel. Again, all these tools links will be provided in the video description in case you want to purchase yours. I always recommend to use a workshop towel. Don't use any microfiber uh, towels, anything like that. The reason is because as soon as you put alcohol on this one to clean up the board, again, this is another one you're going to use 99% or 95% at least in isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. The reason is when you want to clean up the motherboard with this one, spray it on this one. It will tear apart really easy and it will not damage the components on the motherboard. But if you use a microfiber towel, they can get it tangled on the components and it can damage the components on the motherboard. So use a workshop, workshop towel. All right. With all this on hand, obviously, uh, the main is a um, thermal paste. I will recommend you guys use an Arctic MX4 on these models or you can go with a... Over the budget, if you have enough budget, go with the Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut. That's one of the best ones out there. And those are one of the high brands. But in this case, we're going to be using an Arctic MX4. But you can use whichever paste you want. All right. Now we're going to, on the bottom of the cover here, we're going to remove all the screws except these two screws at the mid back. These are screws, they have a little C lock on the other side. So you can rotate and twist them. And but they will not come out. You just feel them like they're loose, but they will not come out. And you want to leave it like that. So loose these two screws at the back, and that's it. The rest of the screws are the same size and height all around the casing. Go ahead and remove all of them and keep them in one pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. All right, now that we removed all the screws down there, we're gonna use our guitar pick or our opening tools. This case is being really beat up, so it's, some people actually dropped it, so the case is kinda broken. You're gonna stick it between the bottom cover and the palm rest like that, and we are gonna twist it like that. Then we're gonna hear some clicking noise. That's what you wanna hear. 
those are the case clips that are getting loose. You want to do that all around on the side, go all the way to the back corner, all the way to the fence, there, there, and then you just want to lift it up, bring it up, and flip it upside down. And another tool, I don't know if you call it a tool, it's a toothbrush. A used or new toothbrush are really good. A soft one, so you can get in between the mesh right on here, so you can clean between the mesh. And make sure, you can actually wash this bottom case and leave it for drying under the sun. Also, don't use the air cans. Those air cans are really bad for electronics. Even they are advertised for electronics, but I don't recommend them. I see many people damage their electronics with those air cans. Use that air compressor, dry air compressor. It's suitable to cleaning the dust, everything. It has more power, unlimited air, and it's better for electronic compared to those can air. Again, those links are in the video description. All right, let's put everything to one side. And right away, we can see the battery, the hard drives, and everything right over here. When you do a maintenance servicing, first thing first, you want to disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, you don't want to yank on the cables. If you do yank it, nothing's happen, but I rather put my fingernails on the side of these two jack right in here on the top portion, and then slide it backward evenly. Okay, don't put, don't do it sideways, one side, do it evenly, you want to push it back. All right, we're going to put that to one side. You're going to disconnect the fan cables right in here, so grab the jack on each fan and pull them up on the left and on the right. You can wiggle them around a little bit and it will come out eventually. Now we're going to remove the covers for the grills at the back, the heat sink. So remove the flat heavy screws right on the back side. And remove this chrome screw right over here. Beside the same thing on here, chrome screw and two flat heavy screws. Right, once you did that, now all you want to do, you want to grab it and you want to lift it up a tiny bit. Okay, there's one more screw right in here. I didn't see that one. So remove that one too. So there's a two screw. Chrome is one hidden right in the corner on this side too. Now you're going to bring it up and wiggle around and there's a spider dust in here and remove the power again you can take it outside and wash it out same thing on this side this one is actually broken if it breaks don't worry about it this is just a cover the plastic after sometimes this one has been in the closet for a long time they never service it but the heat that comes from here it dries up this plastic right in here so this is just a face so it the screws holding it in place, so these corners, when they break, don't worry about it, don't panic or anything. There's nothing is going to happen. All right, once you remove that one, we're going to remove the plate right in here, the supporting plate. We're going to remove one screw right in the middle, screw right in here, a screw right there, and two, one screw right over here. The base for this screw is broken. Once you remove it, lift it up. I'm telling you, when this case is all broken, this the base for the screw is just wiggling around in there, it just fall out down there. So if I do this, it should come out somewhere over there. It will come out if it doesn't come out. I'll open. Oh, look at the base for this one is broken too. So that's what I'm saying. Do your servicing so the heat doesn't stay in here, so it cracks all the plastic down here. So that's why. You need to do your servicing often. Let's remove the cover on this side. And lift it up. Oh, pull this jack backward for the power jack. Untangle it. Bring it through here. And remove it. Okay. The fanny screw one right in here. You need to remove the fanny screw for the left one. Remove the fan and take it outside, use a toothbrush and clean it up. 
Let's go ahead and remove the fan right over here. One screw right over here. Remove this screw and lift up the fan system. Bring it up. Again, take it outside and clean it up. <laughs> you can see right away the reason that it heats up so much over here and it can break the plastic bases because it dries up. So that's why you need to do your own servicing. All right, now we're gonna remove the heat sink by removing four screws on the GPU and four screws on the CPU, or CPU and GPU and one extra screw right over here. If the screw is not coming or it's not budging in, use a flat head screw, a small flat head, and that will do the trick. And that one, if it's still not coming out, so this screw is not budging in. So what I need to do is have more pressure on it. And if more pressure is not working, doing the job, then what I need to do is make a cut right insertion right over here and use a bigger flat head screw. And this is the case, sometimes when it heats up a lot, the screw seized, it gets seized right in the threads. So what I'm gonna do, or oh, another thing is to you can just put a heat right over this one with a solder station or make an insertion right over. I'm gonna make an insertion right over here with a Dremel. I'm gonna put a heat right over here and put a solder station, the solder right on top and heat it up so you can release it. Let's try to remove the screw right at the back here. Yeah, you see this screw is coming out very easy. So we have a problem with this screw right away here. This one is not budging in. All right, what I did, I put it on the, with a Dremel. I made a cut right, on a nice flat cut right on the screw. And I'm gonna use a flat head screw to poke in. And now I can release it, remove it very easy. You can replace this screw, put another screw on, and that way I can protect it with a metal dust right in here. All right, now to remove the heat sink, simply just grab it from on the sides and lift it up. And we can see right away the old thermal paste is almost gone, there's nothing left of it. So we're gonna clean up the old thermal paste, grab a little of the workshop towel, spray alcohol, bring it over, and clean. As long as you clean the crystal dye on the CPU and GPU, you're fine. You don't need to go crazy and clean everything around it. You don't need to replace the thermal pads around it, but if you want to replace all these thermal pads, these are 0.5 millimeter thermal pads, so these are all 0.5 millimeter thermal pads. You can replace them if you wish, but if not, they're okay, they're still good. All right, so I'm gonna take it outside, blow some air, and clean up with a toothbrush, the case, and everything else, and I'll be back right after this. So let's take this one outside, and all right, now that we cleaned it up, we're gonna start putting it back together. So grab one, the clean part of the towel, and clean up the CPU and GPU. Grab your thermal paste, one tiny line on the CPU, and one drop right on the GPU in the middle. All right, so what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna try to remove this screw right in here and remove the base, because the base is made out of the metal and it can go around and make a short on the board, so we need to remove that. So you can see the base is all broken up. So this is what I'm talking about. These things can break and they can go over the motherboard and you can short the thing. You can fix them with some epoxy, stuff like that. We are gonna do that later on. But for now, we're just gonna service it. All right, now that we put thermal paste on top, we're gonna bring it down evenly, put it over. Once sitting down, 
you're gonna put the screws on the CPU and GPU over cross screw them always do one on one side and the other one has to be on the other end so do this for all of them for now I'm gonna put this flat headed screw that I cut from the middle All right, but later on I'm gonna find a replacement for that screw. Okay, put the fan system. This fan goes on this side. Set it down right there. Connect the fan cable, always do it first. I see so many people always forget to put the fan once they put everything together. All right, put the fan screws on one on each. Grab the aluminum bridge cover, push, pass through the cable right there, and bring it on and set it down. Tangle the cable for the power jack. Nicely, evenly put through the jack. Put the two screws. On this one, and this one has actually had three screws, and this is screw, I believe it was from here. Yes. Put the screw on this side, put the cover on this end. Put the chrome screws and put one screw right at the back. I remember this screw is broken, so you won't be able to put it in. All right, let's grab the covers in here, push it in. The other cover on this end, grab it. Push it in. Remember there's one hidden screw on the corners. Put those hidden screws. Okay. Put the two flat headed screws on each on top. And the uh, corner ones is the chrome screw. Even if yours is broken, you can put the screw right there. All right, once you're done with that one, everything is set to go, ready. You clean up nice and clean, fan connector in. You wanna grab the battery connector. You wanna bring it in evenly, not sideways. You wanna push down to the connectors evenly and squeeze it right in there. And the last thing down here would be to the bottom cover that you cleaned up, bring it over, it's straight on top, and squeeze down the corner, make sure you those nice click sounds on the back. And you want to put the rest of the screws on and tighten up the screws on the back end. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out through your own service for UHP Gaming Omen 17 model. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next videos. Just going to finish up putting up the bottom screws.